What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Mechanism version 10 and today we are going to be going over the mecha suit, the various upgrades you can add on to each piece, and the modification station which is the machine that's going to allow you to actually add those upgrades onto the suit itself. Now I think the mecha suit is absolutely fantastic both visually and in terms of effectiveness. It looks phenomenal and it's pretty much exactly what you'd expect from mechanism with all these futuristic machines it also looks like something from the future so that's great and in terms of effectiveness really the only complaint i've ever heard is it's a little bit overpowered which of course is the complaint a lot of mechanism things get so that one was also probably expected too not only is it overpowered because it makes you invincible as long as you give it enough power and you'll be hard pressed to find a way to actually die while you're wearing it but there's also a ton of quality of life upgrades you can add onto it too that make your life so much easier while you're playing. So, assuming you're sold on it now, we're going to jump into the crafting in a minute, but I will say that if there's any episode that you're going to watch the crafting portion of, it would be this one because there are two gating crafting materials when it comes to making this, and one of them, there's actually a little bit of a trick with mechanism to make gathering it a lot easier. One of them is a modded Minecraft one that you probably already know what it is, and one of them is actually a vanilla Minecraft one which you may have never worked with before. But as always, if you want to skip to the next section of the video, past the crafting, you can do that. There will also be a timestamp in the description if you just want to see us messing around with the suit and actually going over the details of it. But now for the crafting. So, the first gating crafting material is of course polonium pellets. Now, we went over this last episode too with the QIO storage system where it was the first time we used polonium pellets. If you do not know, these are made from nuclear waste and there's actually a pretty interesting way that you process these in terms of you know being safe while you're doing it and actually getting the nuclear waste. So I would advise you go watch that episode if you do not have polonium pellets yet because you are going to need these for pretty much every late game mechanism craft that you're going to want to make. So even if you don't want the mecha suit, you should probably have some of these uh, on hand. Now, the other sort of gating crafting material, which is the vanilla one, that some of you, if you're playing modded Minecraft and you play with certain mods that have never been ported to further updates like 1.16, it is the ancient debris. Now, this is something that I had actually never messed around with until now, and it is very difficult to find. It's extremely uncommon in the nether, and the vanilla Minecraft methods that some people use to get this are insane. They basically just blow everything up at very low Y levels because that's where this is most common and it's blast resistant. So to find these little clusters of like two or three of these, they'll just blow a ton of stuff up with TNT or beds and try to find it. Um, but there's actually a better way with mechanism. Unfortunately, as far as I know and other people know, there are not currently any tags for ancient debris. But as long as you're able to find one of these, then you are able to put it in to the digital miner and put it in as an item stack and your digital miner will be able to mine the rest of them for you. And now to give you guys an idea of how uncommon it is, I put a digital miner down and I'd found one of these, I put it in as an item stack because I did not want to spend another, you know, hour trying to find the rest without TNT to blow stuff up. And I was able to get, I believe, a total of 17 out of a level 0 to 80 on the y-axis and a radius of 32. So hopefully you guys know how large that is in terms of how many blocks it went through. It was able to only find me 17, so it is extremely scarce and difficult to find. So if you have access to a digital miner and can move it in there temporarily, I would definitely advise you to do that since we are going to need six of them in today's episode to make the netherite armor that's going to be used to craft the mecha suit. So there's actually a couple steps before you even get to crafting the mecha suit that this will be used for. And we are going to start by going over that really quick since a lot of you probably have never even done this before since it is for the newer versions of Minecraft. And again, a lot of mods are still, you know, only in 1.12 and haven't been moved to the more updated versions. So people are playing in packs that are older and may have never had the chance to even try this out. So the first thing you're going to need to make is the smithing table. And this is just going to be like a regular crafting table, which is the four oak planks, but then two iron ingots on top. Now we're going to grab that out and we can toss it right over here. Looks kind of cool. And this one is for upgrading gear. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a full set of diamond armor, which is already better than the armor I have right now. Uh, and then we are going to upgrade that to netherite armor using netherite ingots. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll make the diamond armor real quick and grab out each piece of that and then what we're going to do is go and process the ancient debris because thankfully 
in mechanism, you are able to process this. And if you look, the netherite scrap is what we're actually after because these, you use four of them per netherite ingot. And we're gonna need four netherite ingots, one per material that we need to upgrade. And to get four of these, you would normally need four. So we'd be stuck at 16 ancient debris needed, which was just under what my digital miner was able to get me. But thankfully, because we were playing with mechanism, haha, overpowered a little bit, uh, we are actually able to use the crusher on the ancient debris to get three of these in the end. So we actually only need 16 and then we'll be left with extra. So we're gonna come down here and we'll be putting these in the crusher and then they will finish processing and should go right into our QIO system, which is filling up nicely. You can see we have the additional 12 ancient debris in here and they should be popping in there. Is there stuff backed up in here that's causing them to wait? Oh, they already processed in here, so they only need to be enriched. They don't even get smelted down. Awesome. So there we go. We have all 18 now, and we can make the netherite ingots. Now, these are going to require, if we look at it, four netherite scraps and four pieces of gold. So there we go. And now we come up here, and we're going to upgrade our gear by putting one netherite ingot in per piece. So there we go. And this is going to be the only sort of different part of each craft... Ooh, that's a very fancy noise. Apparently, making netherite is very impressive to Minecraft. Uh, little did they know that we're about to make something that's even more overpowered than that. Which, I don't even know if this is overpowered, but the game sounds make it seem like it kind of is. But so, if we look at the mecha suit crafts itself, every single one of these is the same except the netherite piece in the middle that corresponds to whatever kind of piece you're trying to make of the mecha suit. Everything else is, of course, expensive, but the same. So we're gonna need, per craft, four HDPE sheets, one ultimate control circuit, one induction cell, and two polonium pellets. So for this whole thing, you are going to need eight polonium, and that's just for making the base craft. As you can see, we have two chests today because some of the upgrades that we make, as you can see in here, are pretty dang expensive and required a significant chunk of AFKing for me to actually have access to all the polonium. So we'll go through right now and craft each of these mecha suit pieces. Yeah, see, we're getting stuff for this, like the recipes unlocked, but we're not getting any achievements for this. And we're definitely not getting something that's super loud and fancy. But here we go. So we now have the fully uncharged mecha suit pieces. And now we're going to go through and we're going to grab out the stuff for making the modification station, which of course is the machine that looks pretty cool and it's gonna allow us, as long as we give it some power, to add the upgrades on that we're making today to each corresponding piece. So this is gonna need four HDPE sheets, one polonium, a steel casing, two ultimate control circuits, and then a chest. Now you could do ender chest, personal chests, but it can also just use a regular one. So there's really no reason to use anything more expensive than a regular one. So here we go, we can craft this, and we actually are gonna grab out, because it needs power, a quantum entangler porter just to throw below it for now, and eventually we'll have sort of a charging area with this near it too, where we have sort of miscellaneous things powered. And then we're going to grab out all this stuff right here. And this is going to be the basis for making all the different upgrades. And if we look, the upgrades are actually called units, and there's a ton of them right here. Now this is for the mecha suit and the mecha tool. Mecha tool, we're not gonna go over in today's episode, we'll go over that in a different one, but most of these are for the mecha suit and each one of these is going to have a similar base craft, which is the module base. So we need to make a ton of these, I believe we're using 45 of them today um, to get a couple of these upgrades. And so to make two of them, you need four bronze nuggets, four tin ingots and an HDPE sheet. So we are just going to toss all of this in there. And there we go, we got 46 of them, so that should be one extra. And now we can grab out all this stuff to make the various upgrades that I think are the most useful. So we're gonna go over that, and hopefully we have enough inventory room. We've got a bunch of advanced solar generators up here. Yep, just enough. So as you can see, obviously this is very expensive. We're gonna be, for today's episode, using over 
uh, half a stack of polonium pellets. These induction cells were horrific to craft. This took me hours, I hope you guys know, to get all this stuff set up. So if you're wondering why the episode was about five days after the last one instead of three like I normally have been doing, it's because this took so long to craft, which is why automated crafting is probably going to be our next episode. So just you know, be looking forward to that because I'm getting real sick of crafting some of this stuff. So <laughs> the upgrades we're gonna be making today will be the radiation shielding unit upgrade, the energy unit upgrade, the solar recharge unit upgrade, and the charge distribution unit upgrade. And each of these is applicable to different pieces of the suit. Some of them can go on everyone, some of them can only go on the helmet or the body armor. And then each one has a different quantity that can be added. So you can see that the radiation shielding is only one can be added to each piece, but it is applicable to the boots, helmet, body, and pants. The energy unit can have eight, and that is equipped on everything. You have the solar recharge unit, which can have eight, but this is only usable on the helmet. And then you have the charge distribution unit, which is only one, and it can only be put on the body armor. So if you're wondering why we're having different quantities of these crafted, that's why. So we'll hop in here, and the first one we'll make will be four radiation shielding units. So there we go. And we're just gonna drop these on the ground for the time being. We're actually probably gonna wanna throw them in here because these can't stack for now. Um, the other ones we'll be able to in the quantities that they're you know applicable. So the next one is the energy units. And these we are going to be making 32 of them. So eight for each piece. So there we go. We got all eight of them. Then we are gonna be making the eight solar recharge units. And this one is really gonna be a pain to craft because we're going to need to just click through all of these. I could just put these in there and then drag the solar panels in, but we're just gonna do this really quick. And we got two more to make. And there we go. And then lastly, we're gonna make the charge distribution unit. So we got one of those, there we go. And now we can grab out the remainder of these. So we have all the upgrades in our inventory. So there we go. Now we got everything we need in here and we are good to go. So we'll set this up downstairs and we're probably gonna put it right over here in this corner by the storage system. So I'm gonna drop it right over here. We'll throw down the quantum entangler porter. We will set it on the power. We'll make sure it's configured so that energy is coming out of every side. And then we're gonna put down the modification station. And you can see right here, ooh, do we need to move it over one? I believe it should be receiving input. Is the input on the back for this? Oh yeah, the input's right there. So we actually need to pick this up real quick and move it. So we'll put it right here. Put it in the different portion of the wall. And then we can put this back down. So right there. And does this not keep it setting? There we go. So we set that. And so the side config stays on, but the configuration didn't. Okay, so there we go. So now everything's good. We got power going in the back. You can see it's over here fully charged. And it shows us our current armor right here. And if we want to, we can remove it through the uh, modification station itself. And we can equip the mecha suit armor. So here we go. We'll throw this on. We can actually take a quick look at ourselves. You can see that it's, I think, pretty awesome. It's got some nice color to it. It's not just totally gray and white. And uh, it's got some nice sort of three-dimensional aspects to it, as a lot of the mechanism machines have too. So... Um, it's not, you know, crazy detailed, but I think it looks awesome. So now that we've gone over the visuals, you can see in the bottom left where you would normally have your armor count right above your health, we have a gray bar and this is actually the charge bar. You can also see that in the upper left hand corner, we've got each different piece of gear and it shows 0%. That is the charge percentage for each individual piece of gear that we are wearing. And lastly, if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see that we have sort of a compass right there and it shows each of the coordinates for us too. So pretty useful. Obviously, if you already have, you know, um, uh, journey maps or something, it's not crazy useful, but definitely cool. And if you wanna hide these, you can just press H but you are going to have a couple other things that are gonna to display too that you might find useful once we add some upgrades to these. But of course, if you wanna hide it because it's a little intrusive, especially in the bottom left-hand corner with that big compass that's always moving, you can feel free to do that. Now, if we go over to the modification station, like I said, this is where we add all the upgrades. And so if we take our helmet, 
Perfect example of adding upgrades to this will be adding the solar recharge units, which of course, if we press shift, it shows the supporting items, which is the mecha suit helmet. You can't add it to any other piece of gear, only this one. And if we click those on, it's going to slowly add them in. And these are going to allow it to harness the power of the sun to charge the suit. And the more you install, the more it's going to increase the rate of charge. Now with these though, unfortunately, they will not charge everything, they only charge the helmet, which kind of sounds interesting because it says that they charge the whole suit, but you actually need to combine these with the charge distribution unit in the body armor, which is the only thing this can apply to, to evenly distribute charge throughout all worn mecha suit armor, which is important because you want the charge evenly distributed between each piece. It's not gonna help you if your mecha suit helmet is fully charged and the rest of your armor isn't. So now we have that. The rest of the upgrades are actually applicable to everything. We're not gonna add any, in, uh, any upgrades today that are for the pants or the boots, but if we look up here, We'll go over all the different upgrades you can have. The nutrition injection unit upgrade is for the helmet, and it automatically feeds the player nutritional paste when they're hungry, which is awesome. You never have to worry about food again. You have the jetpack unit, which applies a hydrogen fuel jetpack to the mecha suit, and it goes on the body armor, which is awesome because being able to fly is definitely a huge perk. We have the vision enhancement unit, which brightens the surrounding environment, allowing the user to see through darkness and the more effective uh, it is based on how many you install. And this is only usable on the helmet. Uh, of course, we already have the solar recharge unit, which allows you to charge the helmet um, out in the sun. Then you have the hydraulic propulsion unit, which allows the user to both step and jump higher for the boots. You've got the locomotive boosting unit, which I think is kind of a funny name, which increases the user's sprinting speed and jumping distance, which is pretty cool. That's for the pants. Uh, then you have a couple of these. So this is the dosimeter unit, which displays the user's current radiation dose. You have the uh, mecha tool upgrades. So some of these are mecha tool upgrades too that we're skipping over. You have the electrolytic breathing unit, which uses electrolysis to create breathable oxygen from water and will also fill a jetpack module with hydrogen when necessary, which is awesome. And this one is for the helmet. Uh, then we go through, this one is the gravitation modulating unit, which uses experimental technologies and tremendous energy of antimatter, allowing the user to defy gravity, which is super cool. We got a couple other mecha tool ones, and then we have the charge distribution unit, which I think is one of the most important ones, which is evenly distributes charge throughout all worn mecha suit armor. The energy units, which increases energy capacity on every piece. And then you have the radiation shielding unit, which is also another very important upgrade, which provides thick radiation proof metal plating to any mecha suit armor piece, because even if you have the armor on and charged, it will not protect you from radiation unless you have these upgrades. And a lot of people use this to protect them from radiation when they don't listen to my episode on how to handle nuclear waste and they accidentally irradiate their entire base. Um, then you also have the magnetic attraction unit, which uses powerful magnets to draw distant items towards the player, and that is for the boots, and the inhalation purification unit, which applies a miniature electromagnetic field around the breathing apparatus, preventing selected potion effect types, and that is for the helmet. So now that we've gone over all of them, and I've talked you guys ear off, we'll finish adding in the upgrades. So we're adding in the energy units, and you can see that it is essentially just going to double it every single time. And so you go from 16 uh, megajoules, I believe that is, to, is it one point? No, okay, it's 4.09 gigajoules. So it's able to hold a ton of power right now. Um, if we're able to even burn through that amount of power, we would have to be really taking some serious damage. Um, even the megajoules that you have as a baseline is crazy. So I think if we were to fill each one of these up, we'd actually use majority of the power we've generated so far in our base. Um, I think we're at about 21 gigajoules right now. Uh, it might be a little bit higher after I AFK'd for a while, but yeah, to give you guys a sense of how much power these are actually capable of holding. And of course, if I haven't already mentioned it, but I think I have, the armor is only effective when it actually has power. The damage you take is gonna be removed from the power of the armor. And so it's kind of like, that is what's mitigating your damage. That's what's essentially the power is like health 
before it actually hits your real health. It's like a buffer. So all the damage is gonna cut through the power of the suit, and then once you have no power in the suit, it's gonna start hurting you directly. So now we have all of the energy upgrades on here, and the last one to add to each one is the radiation shielding unit. Now obviously, I don't need this right now because I don't have radiation in our base, but if I did, this would be extremely important. Something to note though is once you have radiation poisoning, putting the suit on will not stop you from taking damage. So I know a lot of people think that if they get it and they quickly craft this, they'll be able to survive or add the upgrades in. That's not true. You are still going to initially die from radiation poisoning. You can't stop yourself from taking damage just by tossing this on once you already have that, I guess you call it like a debuff on you. So we'll go upstairs and we'll charge this now so that we have an idea of how it actually works. And then we can go over how to adjust some of the settings. So if we actually grab each piece out really quick, we can toss it in here and charge it up a little bit. So there we go. We'll charge each piece a little bit. It definitely does not need uh, a full, you know, however many gigajoules each one can hold, but we'll charge it up a little bit and then we can head outside in the sun and it will charge further as we just walk around. So there we go. We have a little bit of charge on each one and you can see that we have a slight green bar down there where our armor is. Um, and as you add more pieces in, your overall charge percentage decreases unless each piece is totally even. So now if we go outside, we will actually start charging. So if we were to open this up, you can see that each one is slowly increasing, and now they are all even because we have the charge distribution unit in the body armor. So even if that they weren't even when we charged them all up, they are now all even and will stay even no matter how much damage we take or anything like that. So now we know how to disable the uh, you know HUD or whatever you wanna call it by pressing H. You can see we have the actual charge percentage, each one's at 4% in the upper left, and certain modules that you add into these or upgrades will show in the bottom right. Things like the night vision upgrade will actually show if it's enabled or disabled in the bottom right. None of the ones we have right now show that, but if you do have something showing up there, that's what it is. And what we're actually gonna do really quick is if we go into our options and then controls, you will be able to see that there's a bunch of mechanism controls and there's chest mode switch, feet mode switch, head mode switch, and then module tweaker. And that is because things like the head mode switch, which is on V by default, that is how you're going to turn on and off your night vision with uh, a quick you know, hotkey. There are other ways to do it, but things like that, that is how you turn it off. But if you wanna get even more in depth, the module tweaker, which is backslash, is what is going to allow you to you know, turn certain ones off or adjust them. So if we press backslash, we are going to get the module tweaker up and you can see it looks very similar to the modification station. We can go to each individual piece and you can see that there's options for these where we can change the you know HUD overlay colors and stuff and we can turn off the compass. So that's something that I want off because I don't actually like that. And then we can also see the upgrades on here. So if we look at the radiation shielding unit, it is enabled right now. You can actually turn that off and then it'll mark it as red. I don't really know why you'd wanna do that, but certain ones actually expend copious amounts of power, like the night vision one, that one will expend a ton of power. So turning that off when you don't need it actually makes sense. Other ones like the energy units do not have the option to turn it off, um, but the solar recharge unit does too. If you look at the chest, you can see that we have the radiation one, but we also have the charge distribution one. And there's three settings for this. There's overall enabled, then there's charge the suit and charge your inventory. So you can actually set it to distribute charge not only to the suit itself, but to things in your inventory, like configurator, atomic disassembler, stuff like that. Now, there was actually a bug, and I don't know if it was fixed, but if you do have charging the inventory enabled, and you seem to be expending a lot of power, there's actually a bug where you would expend a ton more power than necessary charging things in your inventory. So if you do run into that issue, try putting this on false. I don't know if that's still a bug, but it's one that I saw that was complained about prior and I don't know if it was ever fixed. Then if we go down, you can see that we have the same thing on the pants and the same thing on the boots. So now we have a very overpowered set of armor that is able to charge itself. And I believe the only way I can think of to actually die while you're wearing this and have radiation protection and power in it is to go drown yourself. I believe that is the one way you can kill yourself is if you just sit in water 
and drown yourself. And that is, of course, if you do not have the, which upgrade is it? The, it should be over here. No, I have no idea. There's so many upgrades to these. Um, I think there's an upgrade, right? That allows you to breathe water, breathe in water. Unless I'm mistaken, I thought there was. I'm trying to go through all of these. Electrolytic breathing unit. Okay, so this one. Um, but I believe if you do not have that upgrade, you can die in water. So when you have those one-off upgrades, there's the radiation one. If you don't have that, radiation can kill you. If you have the upgrade for water breathing, you're able to live there. But if you don't have that, water can kill you. But anything else that there's not an upgrade specifically to prevent death to, you're invincible to that as long as you have power. So I am going to make that known because if you don't have power, I'm not responsible for the items you lose. But this set of armor is absolutely awesome. It's crazy overpowered, and I definitely think it's a worthwhile investment to make. But that's going to be it for today, guys. I know it's a little bit of a quicker episode on a little bit less of like a... I don't, don't want to say interesting topic because I think this is really cool, but it's not like a crazy cool setup or automation or anything. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. I apologize if you found it a little bit boring as it's a little bit more of a niche topic that some people wanted to see. But next episode, we'll be back to doing machinery based stuff. And uh, yeah, so good luck with you guys setting up your armor. Let me know if you have any issues with it being super overpowered because I know that is a controversial subject and I will talk to you guys later.